too, buddies. You never know who you're going to run into on the lake out here. Love fishing. Uh, anyway, back out here in East Texas, and man, it has been, it's just been a crazy year for me. I haven't done near the videos I'd like to. Uh, man, we had the, uh, you know, last year we had the COVID. This year uh, started out the, the year with a record snowfall in, in uh, North Louisiana where I live. And then I had shoulder surgery. That set me down for three months. Missed all the spring fishing. Then we're, we started having rain, and good grief, it's raining. God, God said he'd never let it rain 40 days and 40 nights on us again, but he certainly didn't say anything about 30 days. And I think that's about where we're at. But we got a break today. Man, I, the lake is, is just, just enough breeze to help the spotlight do what it's supposed to. And... Uh, got a lot I want to do hey guys if you um, well let me back up sometime today I'm gonna to show you uh, for all you guys that don't have live scope like I didn't always have it uh, I used to fish stumps and lay downs and brush piles and make brush piles all you know all that stuff but um, the uh, Texas Park and uh, lakes uh, a lot of their lakes they put out artificial reef they I think they call it fish habitats Get on the internet. Just get on get on the internet and type in um, Texas Lakes uh, uh, Fish Habitat. Lake of the Pines. Type in Lake of the Pines Fish Habitat. They've got 20-something, 20 25, 27 maybe um, artificial reefs out there. I caught my first fish on one of those habitats. I didn't even have it... Uh, I didn't even, I didn't have this uh, big nice hummingbird. I had a little, little small that came on my on my boat little, a little, little small um, depth finder there. So I downloaded uh, uh, Navionics off of the app store, put it on my telephone, uh, boating, uh, Navionics, whatever has all the lakes. Uh, got the got the uh, nautical maps and all that. So I downloaded that. Put it on my phone, then I put the uh, I put the uh, 25 uh, coordinates for these artificial reefs. Put that on my phone. Caught my first fish using my telephone, my iPhone. I put it on the on the deck down there. Followed it when I when the boat got over the uh, what showed to be the coordinates for that that um, artificial reef. I threw a, a buoy in and uh, made a circle back. Man, I could see it with my depth finder. Even with my antique depth finder, I saw it. And uh, I hooked on a minnow. <laughs> yeah, I used to fish shiners. I really did. Uh, nothing wrong with shiners. I'm just picking. I, I don't use them myself. I like the challenge of, of uh, catching, catching fish on jigs, figuring out what they want. But I hooked on a shiner, dropped that thing over, and I'm telling you, I had a fish on in 30 seconds, and I thought, Man, there ain't nothing to this. I didn't catch another fish for two hours, but uh, that's crappie fishing. But I'll show you how to find those things. Put it, you know, just put it on your depth finder. We'll go up there and, and find one, put it on camera, and uh, I'll go and bug. And uh, I'll even, uh, I'll even hook the live scope up so we can get a better look at it. <coughs> and uh, you don't need live scope to fish it, but. I've got a lot I want to fish today, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, on that one thing. But, uh, you know, back to uh, back to my YouTube. Guys, if, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, if you're just getting into thinking about getting a live scope or you have a live scope, man, check out my videos. I, I didn't have anything like this when I started uh, live scoping, and I just had to go to uh, School of Hard Knocks. I, I've got, I've got about, I don't know, uh, going on three years with it, and um, man, I remember, I just, I didn't know anything about it, so it was just a trial and error thing for me, but I'll be happy to share what knowledge, what knowledge I have. A lot of people say that, uh, a lot of my friends and all think that I, I got a pretty good head on my shoulders, that everybody seems to think I, I, I got it together, everybody but Miss Pam, she Anyway, that's another story for another day. But um, I pale in comparison compared to my Uncle Mike that 
I don't know if you saw the video. I took him out uh, a couple of weeks ago. He's thinking about live scope and he wanted to, to go out with me. We've been trying to get together for a lifetime, literally. And so I took him out and he, he's, he's no dummy now. Um, tell you a little bit about him. He's had, uh, he's had several titles in his life. He, um, when I was a kid, just, just a boy, eight, nine years old, uh, he got in, my uncle got into uh, bodybuilding. He had a title, bodybuilder. Man, he had the magazines, all these guys, the bowed up muscles and all that, and he drank all the, all the uh, fish oils and, and all that mess, and, and he, got, he got pumped up. He got pumped up. He won the, uh, the uh, contest title, whatever they had for his weight class in, in weightlifting. So uh, one time in his life, he was a uh, title of a weightlifter. Then he went on to college, and uh, he got a degree from Louisiana Tech in engineering. And uh, I guess you could say he had a title of engineer. And from there, he went on into the business world, and, and uh, now he's got the title of uh, businessman, CEO, founder. He started an uh, engineering company, uh, Burrow Global. If you ever go through Houston, see that big old tall building that says Burrow on the top? That ain't me, but uh, I can say it's my uncle. He's done real well. He's a smart dude, but uh, he was quick to say, man, this live scope, I don't know. I, there's a lot to this. Uh, he thought, like a lot of you guys, you think you go out there, you got live scope, you throw it in, it's a fish magnet, man. They just come to it, you set the hook, you got your limit 20, 25, 30 minutes, you go home. It ain't that way. But uh, anyway, talking about talking about titles, we all have a title. You know, I had a title, uh, I was a telephone man, I had a title of a lineman, I had a title of a installer, title of a repair man. Uh, you know, your title may be doctor, uh, attorney, uh, teacher, everybody's got a title, but you know, it ain't so much the title as it is the testimony. You know, the Bible says that we are more than overcome, more than overcomers, more than conquerors, I think it says, more than conquerors, more than, more than a conqueror, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You see, I believe when we stand before the Lord, he's going to say, uh, you know, uh, and it's just me saying, talking, me and you. And, you know, the Lord, he may say, uh, what's your title there? And uh, he may say, uh, uh, doctor, attorney. It ain't the title that's, gonna, that's so much going to get you in as it is that blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Now, he may say, hey, what's your title? Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm a, I'm a salesman. Really? Okay. What did you sell? I sold Bibles. I sold, man, I sold millions of them, Lord. Well, that's great. That's good. But tell me about your testimony. Did you ever, did you ever uh, put into practice what, what my word told you to do? Were, were, you ever, were you ever saved by the blood of the Lamb? Well, then he may say, you know, next, uh, what's, what's, what's your title, sir? What, what, what did you do? I'm a builder. Really? What'd you build? I built I built churches. I built churches all over the world. Really? Do you ever uh, attend a church service? Now I'm not saying you got to go to church to be make it to heaven, but did you ever go to church? Did you ever give your life to Christ? Well, well, I, I can't say that I did. I can't say. Next, what's your title, young man? old man with the white beard I'm a fisherman really what'd you fish for crappie you didn't lose you didn't use that live scope did you yes sir yes lord I did I did well what's your testimony there crappie fisherman oh wait you're that you're that go fish guy wait a minute you're that guy that would do a video on catching fish but
but you got a testimony, son. I, uh, I heard you a few times, and, and you, uh, you, you shared with people about the blood of the Lamb. <clears throat> yes, sir, I did. I did. And hey, you send me back, I'll do it some more. <laughs> but uh, it's the testimony, guys. It's the testimony. It's the, uh, more importantly, guys, it's, it's, it's the blood of the Lamb. It's that blood that, that Jesus shed that we could have forgiveness of our sins. It's, uh, it's only through that accepting of that blood, being cleansed by that blood, that, that we make heaven. You know, I, I think Jesus had to shed that blood because, you know, back in, back in Old Testament times, they, um, you know, they had to go to the high priest and bring a, uh, bring a calf or a, uh, a lamb or something to shed, you know, offer up as a sacrifice. Man, there was so much sin going on. I think God saw real quick, I'm going to run out of things to sacrifice the way these people are sinning, but, uh, you know, praise God. Praise God that Jesus came and, and, and shed his blood. We don't have to go through that anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, guys, hey, um, God bless you. I pray for you guys all the time, even, even uh, you know, if I don't know your names. I know, I know a lot of you by your email name or whatever on youtube but i pray f i pray for all of you guys and i hope you pray for me too but anyway look uh let's get out here and uh film some of those fish habitats and see if we can't catch a few of those big old slabs hey let's just go fish all right guys here's a look at uh some of those habitats on live scope and actually they'll look even better if you've got a hummingbird side imaging um, unit, they actually look better on it. All right, y'all get the idea, but uh, let's go do some timber fishing. All right, guys, this is what I love. You know I love that timber fishing. Nothing wrong with fishing those uh, brush tops and lay downs, but I like standing timber. I got a couple fish right there. Uh, they're going down on me. Let's see what we can do. Pick out our first victim here. We got one at 20 feet. And then I got two more. They look a little, I don't know. I'm gonna hit that one at 20 feet first. <clears throat> good conditions today, just enough breeze. Last time I took this Pam out, good grief. It was, it was horrible wind. The last two trips have been bad wind and the fish been real spooky that guy's going down at 15 feet well we'll abort and go after this other tree got a couple of good ones on it Moment of truth. Fire away. Goes the jig. Lost my jig. That means it's probably right in line with the tree. So I'll start watching the fish. All right, there I am right there way off. Swing again. Got a little movement and a fish. There he comes. Come on up here, buddy. Not a bad one to start the day with. 
bad one at all. What I like to see too, he really swallowed that jig. Nice fish. And uh, I've got to look on my YouTube and see who sent me this. I can't remember your name, but uh, you probably know, know your handiwork. The fella asked if he could send me a bait or two that he likes to tie. Hey, I'm all about trying new stuff. They liked it. Let's get another one. All right. One in the live well. Had to uh, move all this camera and stuff around. I'm trying to get the best possible picture I can for you guys, because uh, I like to sit back at night and look at them too. And there's little things that I, I look at that I don't see while I'm fishing that I pick up on when I go back and look at the replays. Kind of like a, uh, kind of like football. Man, I'm about, I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. I got fish right here on me. We got one at 10 feet, couple of them, 10 and 15 feet here, right in this area. Let's see what they're all about. more line. I think I'm going to get that one on the right. Go for him. He looks a little more relaxed. That one right there. Here he comes. There he is. Come on up here, bud. Yeah, he just looked a little bit more relaxed. Good fish. Good fish. I think they're all good. I like to see that bait way down in their mouth instead of just on their lip. Get in there with your buddy. Using my uh, 12 foot ACC mid seat today. Um, got a bait casting reel. I use spin cast also, spinning reels. Uh, just uh, right now, I'm, this is what I got on there. It's just one of my old bass fishing reels. Got a, uh, got a weight tied on about 18, 20 inches up, up above the, uh, the jig. This is a, uh, ooh, that looks like about an eighth ounce little jig that somebody was so kind to uh, ship to me right now it's two for two I like to scout at 65 feet find the fish and then dial back something at 25 feet. I'm gonna have to, it takes me a, a bit to get used to the uh, to the wind. It's been so windy I've had to get closer to the fish. I certainly don't need to do that today. There's my jig right above him. I'm 
just going to hold it there, see, let him get a look at it. If he wants it, he'll move. He didn't want it on that first drop. Get lined up on him again. See, it looks like he disappeared. He's there. He's just looking at me. When he turns sideways, we'll see. Come on, buddy. Show me your good side. stop on him. He liked that, didn't he? Come on up. Come on up. Still swallowing it. That fish there, uh, I swam the, the jig past him or glided by him. He didn't like it that way. I do a, what I call a drop and stop. I'll get that jig situated right above the fish and uh, just drop my rod tip, just drop it down, have enough slack in it, you know, three, four feet. He'll see that jig up there. And then when you drop it and then stop it, just stop it right on his nose. A lot of times, well, you saw what happened just then. It's just just one of the presentations you can use to kind of change it up. You know, sometimes they like it dead stick, not moving at all. Uh, other times they like that pendulum drop where it just kind of down. I know the cr black crappie tend to like it more moving like that. Uh, white crappie, <laughs> they're just crazy. Who knows? Jigs three for three. <coughs> Boy, he's got that high pro glow, doesn't he? <coughs> I like it when they glow like that. He's kind of moving around. He's moving around. lost him. Alright. Let's find one that's like me, just likes to just sit around. Do nothing. Them lazy fish. decent fish down there glowing it 12 feet deep 25 feet out y'all see him right there need to get me a little pointer instead of using these sausage fingers to live scope one of the hardest things to overcome not for everybody it was for me and certainly was for my uncle I took the other day for the first time you've got to remember it when you see your jig down there 
and I'm, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. All right, here's the fish right here. I'm going to drop this jig down. He's at 10 feet. I'm going to drop it at about 5 feet or so. See it there? Now, <clears throat> what I want to show you, you're going to be sitting out there and, and looking at a fish. Y'all can't really tell it's a fish, I'm sure. That is one right here. There, he's, he's sticking his nose out a little bit. But you see my jig, and you see the fish. And it looks like that jig is to, to the left, like I need to drag it to the right. No, 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 no. That's the hardest thing to overcome. Your brain is telling you, your eyes are, are sending the signal, you need to go right. You need to go out. If you look at the footages at the top of the screen, that jig is at five feet. It needs to go out to 15 feet. So you don't need to go right. You need to push your pole out. It needs to go out. Oh, and that fish has just showed itself and enough school. I got to I gotta drop on him. There's my jig. Now I'm going to ease it down there to him. That other fish wants it. Doggone it. Get off. Get off. Littler fish is trying to get it. I'm on the tree, so I pull it, I'm gonna get it off, drop it, and stop it. Here he comes, pick it up, pick it up. Oh, I missed him, missed him. He was a light biter. You see, he's just sitting there. He, he didn't suck it up, but I felt him, so I set the hook. And uh, flat missed him. I thought he was gonna suck it up like those other fish have been doing. Bam! Come on. That's not. I don't think that's the fish. Might be. Hoping that's a smaller fish. I'm just kind of toying with him. He's kind of toying with me. He's running interference for these other guys down there. They he's keeping me busy. back to those other ones. No, I don't think that was the big fish. I think the big boy's still down there. Time. Come on up. Ah. Oh, that's a dandy there. Woo. Come on over here, boy. Oh, that's a dandy. I told you he was biting light. Look at that jig. I missed him the first time and barely caught him. Watch here. Came right out. He just barely, if I'd have given him an ounce of slack, he would not be going in this live well right now. Well, that was fun. I like a little, little challenge there. All right, Let's see if there's another one. <clears throat> Let's 
Let's get back out here. But uh, back to what I was talking about earlier about left and right. Uh, that's going to be the, your one of your biggest challenges is to uh, train your brain to go in and out with that jig rather than left and right. Now there are times I'll tell a person you got to drag it right, drag it right, and that's because I'll see the fish but not the jig. So I see the fish and I have to turn my transducer to the right to see their jig, then they need to drag that, that jig into view, which is gonna to be to their left. But uh, hey, if you're, the, the easiest thing to do is just pick that jig up and throw it again. Throw all day long till you see the jig. Uh, placement is everything. You gotta get that jig on their nose. And uh, after you do it a few thousand times like I have, you know, it's just, it, it becomes just natural and you can take one glance and throw and uh, it all comes together for you. Just don't rush it, don't rush it. I'm actually fishing a new part of this lake and uh, I'm back on Lake uh, No Can Tell. Um, but, um, just picked out a new part of the lake and haven't been here this part in over, gosh, probably two years. And uh, there's some fish here. There's fish everywhere. That live scope will just amaze you at the fish. And what I'm doing, I'm just looking for bigger, bigger fish right now. We got one out here at 40 feet. Ease over there. Dial it back. I cannot believe it is June already. I missed all the uh, spring fishing with that shoulder surgery recovery. Uh, I'm about to get back where I want to be. Coming into view on the right of your screen. Got a couple of fish there. I use uh, spot lock a lot. I don't have the, uh, I wish I did have the patience and the uh, control, hook control, boat control. But you know what, hey, I'm 67, gonna be 68, and I'm all about easy. I didn't pay all that money for this old Trex not to use it. I'll wear this sucker out and buy another one, but uh, I, like, I like to fish easy. And I like to sit down when I fish. Uh, my legs, back are gone. about 15 feet. What I do, when I get about 10 feet, I'll hit spot lock. It'll drift back a little bit before it locks on. All right, I'm off the gas. Hit the lock. Give it just a second to swing around. Get my, I'll give me time to get my line pulled out. Don't get in a rush. They're either going to swim off or they're going to sit there and wait for you. This guy, he's so far, he's being patient. The other day, they were hauling tail at 20 feet. 10 feet out. Let's see what we can do. I'd like to see my jig. I want y'all to see it, so I'm going to turn the transducer. There we go. I'm going to stop it right there. See what he wants to do. Here he comes. He made a mad dash, didn't he? I'm gonna pick it, take it away from him. Oh, there we go. Up here, buddy. Had to take it away from him. He, he made that mad dash for it. And again, see a while ago, they were sucking it up. These last two fish, man, it's just, it's falling out there. Now he did chase that fish, so 
that's another thing I need to tell you guys. Uh, when that fish is coming, uh, come on, Charlie. When that fish is coming, uh, coming at your jig, and you've got it, you know, so far ahead of him, don't stop. Keep taking that. Here's the fish. Here's the jig. Just uh, keep it, keep it a few inches in front of. You want to see daylight. You want it daylight. You want to see space between uh, the jig and that fish's nose, and and just keep it. I've had them things come up from 20 feet and hit it, crush it four feet from the surface. They think that that shad's getting away and uh, they chasing it. They like they like that chase. They don't like that hook. Everybody, hey guys, uh, I caught all the fish the law would allow and I was still having fun. So I had to give these fish away so I go catch some more. Hey, this is uh, Tracy and Tommy Hancock. Tommy Hancock and his. Look at those, man, I tell you what, we have got some fish today. Big fish. Them are pretty. Big crap. And we're on, we're out here on Lake, uh, my, that Indian Lake, uh, no can tell. So <laughs> don't ask them, don't ask them. They swore uh, uh, an oath of secrecy. Hey guys, I hope y'all have a good time. I'm gonna go out and catch some more. Guys, I uh, got my limit and I ran into some of my YouTube buddies out here, a YouTube family, so. They needed a few more fish. Uh, there was three of them, so they could catch quite a few more. So I gave them a fish. Thought, what the heck, I'm gonna come out here in the open water, see if there's any chickens running around out here. I love chasing chickens. Caught a couple, and uh, they were nice fish. So I broke the camera out. See if we can't get a chicken on video. There we go, got that chicken. Come on up here. He's not that big, but oh. decent fish. One thing about those chickens, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're gonna hit. They, you may not catch them, but he will hit. That's the fun thing about it. There's another one. That looks like a little better fish right here. A little better drop this time. Just as, just as the bait got to him. There he is. I told you, man, you get it. Let's see if I can turn the camera. Uh, that's a good fish. Oh, dang. I'd like to get on him. Like I said, I am, I am not real good at this. I just don't do it enough. 
keep that troll motor on in. And... There he is. Good fish there. Moving in a little closer. Come on, we almost to you. Here he comes. Come on up here. Ooh, we are so close. He ought to be making a move. Here he comes. There he is. Come on up. Decent little old chicken right here. If I can, wasn't ready, don't have my rod ready. Get on there quick. my jig go there we are oh yeah come on up come on up nice one nice one Woo, that's a good fish oh almost went back in the lake It stopped like man. What's going on here? Come on up. Some out in front. Boy, they're fighting for it. <laughs> that one won out. Looks like one right in here. Maybe two. Uh, it was, it was two of them running together. There we go. Come on, buddy. Yeah, you, you should have. Oh, he got some weight to him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come here, bud. Mm, 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 mm. Well, guys, I can tell you. Today, if you had one of these, ACC crappie stick super grip 12 foot rear seat it was a bad day to be some of these guys Whew. I don't know how many I caught but I was catching them throwing them back giving them away it was a good day it's kind of days we dream about we don't always have these days but uh, when God blesses you with them, take advantage of it. Hey, man, I'll catch y'all next time. God bless you. Go fish.